what exactly we are supposed to write here you are supposed to explain how she was understanding the problems associated with the classical theories like they were very rigid in nature hello everyone welcome to plutus is myself vivek raj in the continuation of the series that is going on the public administration pyq series i have two questions to talk about today so the first question you can see it is related to the mary parker follett so let's look into the question so we have the question that is mary parker follett traced the foundational value of business and enterprise on her way to understand the organism of governmental machinery okay so what is the meaning of this question what this question wants to uh, ask from you that when the mary parker follett is trying to understand the nature the organism of governmental machinery she is tracing the foundational value of business and the enterprise okay because all of a sudden if they will be coming to understand the governmental machinery it may not be that good idea it may not be may, uh, you know will be able to provide that good solutions so accordingly she traced the foundational value of the business and the enterprise and then she came up with the ideas okay so if we are talking about the structure of this particular answer the question so we have intro okay so in the intro you are supposed to talk about briefly briefly about briefly about follet briefly about the follet so what exactly you will be writing in the introduction you can write about that she has been acting at the bridge between the classical and the neo classical thinkers right and she is known for the dynamic administration and she 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 is called as you know the lady in front uh you know uh, ahead of her time this kind of some some two three points the very uh, uh we can say the very important or very uh, uh significant points you can add with respect to the mary parker follett okay so she acted as a bridge between the classical and the neo classical thinkers that will be more sounding line so those kind of lines should be added she was ahead of her time because of visionary nature so those kind of points you can add okay so introduction will be like this okay then we will be uh catering to the demand of the question this way like foundational value okay so here you can write how you can write this heading how she traced the foundational values foundational values of business and enterprise okay so what exactly we are supposed to write here you are supposed to explain how she was understanding the problems associated with the classical theories like they were very rigid in nature the hierarchy was very uh, watertight the sup uh, supervisor was just you know giving instructions to the subordinate without understanding their problems right and if the conflicts are arising they are not being entertained and they are being uh, discouraged and th conflicts are not being taken positively but we are looking uh, uh, this way that if the conflicts are coming then it will be leading to you know the decrease in the de efficiency like that okay so she traced the foundational value of business and enterprise so you will be highlighting here how she was having consideration of the classical theories the ideas given by the <coughs> management thinkers okay like the taylor and the fayol so those ideas how she took into the concentration to understand the organism of governmental machinery okay so here you will be talking about how she uh, focused on that part right then after that immediately after that you will be talking about this part of question so here you can talk about that 
she she gave she gave the concept theek hai concept like power with only one point i'll write you will it will make good sense to you power with power with then power over power over it should make very very good sense to you power with she is talking about in comparison to power over she is giving tracing the foundational value of business and enterprise on her way to understand organism of governmental machinery she is trying to understand how the governmental machinery should be functioning so she is understanding that in the businesses and in the enterprises there has been a characteristic that there has been a process wahan pe kya hota hai power over superior will be exercising extreme kind of control over the subordinate so mary parker follett suggested no power over is not something good but we should be looking for the power with that if you are want to issue some instructions some guidelines to the uh, you know the subordinates then those instructions should be issued in the consultation with the subordinates all together you cannot issue the direction that they you have to follow but you can exercise the power by consulting them by in in a very coordinated manner theek hai to hum keh sakte hain how this concept of power with came into picture when she is comparing the things with that of the power over so that's why the question is asking foundational value of business and enterprises were traced by her while she is trying to understand the organism of governmental machinery so these are the foundational values of the uh, businesses and the enterprise and this is the her understanding with respect to the governmental machinery okay like that you can talk about that uh, as i mentioned in the beginning that uh, in the private organization the businesses and enterprises conflicts are not being uh, looked in looked from the very positive uh, angle but she talked about that conflicts are socially valuable differences and they should be uh, treated uh, that way only and it is not the conflict that is destructive all the time but the conflicts will be constructive or destructive it will be depending upon how you are dealing with that conflict how what kind of measures you are providing if two employees are fighting themselves uh, among among themselves then then th- this particular fight is not always destructive according to the mary parker follett but what is the scenario that how organization is dealing with that uh, conflict is something that that we are supposed to look into okay so she suggested three ways of solving the conflict or resolving the conflict one was the compromise where both the parties will be giving away uh, giving up something and there was other way that is called domination where one party will party will be dominating over the others and the next she suggested the integration where uh, both uh, you know the uh, both the views uh, parties views will be taken into consideration and based on those views new solution will be provided where both the parties will be satisfied okay so i hope the question is very clear that how she traced the foundational value of the business and enterprise in her way to give understanding with respect to the understanding of organism of governmental machinery so this is all about the first question let's move on to the second so here we have the another question so here chester bernard model of contribution satisfaction equilibrium is still considered as logical model of organizational motivation okay so contribution satisfaction equilibrium is still considered as logical model of organization organizational motivation then question is saying do you agree give arguments so this is another question that we have in front of us so we are aware of that as per the chester bernard model of contribution satisfaction equilibrium it is being said that people will be able to contribute in the organization if their demands will be fulfilled the contribution if the employee 
employee is making certain kind of contribution in like his or her capacity theek hai so that contribution should be more than the satisfaction satisfaction this is what is being said in the chester bernard uh, contribution satisfaction equilibrium that if people are contributing people are doing their job and the kind of salaries they are getting that should be more than the contribution made if that will not be more than the contribution made or the kind of facilities that we are providing then individual will be demotivated okay so chester bernard's model of contribution satisfaction equilibrium is still a consider a logical model of organizational you know the motivation so this since this question is uh, talking about do you agree so here here there will be yes although you will not write the yes or no in the answer but still there will be two side of the story because the question is about do you agree so certainly you cannot agree completely that this is a very logical model and it is you know working uh, for organizational motivation nowadays completely right so what exactly you are supposed to do you are supposed to explain this equilibrium with some example for example in it sector for example in the governmental sector anywhere employee employees are working they will be able to contribute in the organization if they will be satisfied if because of any reason they will not be satisfied they will not be motivated to contribute so they will not be contributing so that way you are agreeing to the statement but on the other side you can say that in case of country like india we are having large scale unemployment okay so and and also there are certain sectors like the mining sector automobile sector and and so on and informalism in the employment that we are providing so even if people are not satisfied they are able to contribute so we cannot say this is always the case do you agree and give argument okay so you will be what you will do is you will be explaining the contribution satisfaction equilibrium given by bernard at the first place after that you will be talking about how it is still relevant how it is not then you will be concluding in the positive side only that more or less it is relevant today and it is giving good good insight to all the organization these kind of principles can be used okay so i hope this is also making good sense like how you can approach this question so uh, this is all for the day we'll be meeting in the next video thank you